My name is John Henderson and I'm an underwater archaeologist based at the University of Nottingham. As you can probably tell, I'm not actually in Nottingham at the moment. Uh, I'm in the southern coast of uh, the Peloponnese in Greece, uh, working with a Greek team and a British team uh, to survey and examine what we believe to be the oldest submerged city in the world. In 1967, the submerged remains of a prehistoric town were found by Nick Fleming, then a young oceanographer from the University of Southampton. I was already aware uh, that there was a shortage of Bronze Age settlements and ports in the southern Peloponnese. Uh, there seemed to be a gap in the sense that uh, um, the right sort of material had not been found, which would be consistent with seafaring at that time. And we came over here and looked at the island and the long sandy beach, and I thought, well, that's not much good. You don't find ruins in deep sand, usually. And we swam out to the island. Uh, again, I didn't see anything. We went along the ridge, joining the various rocks. We saw one or two tombs, but not a town. And then we swam straight back from the island to the shore, and that's when I started seeing walls and buildings and stuff just everywhere. In 1968, a team from the University of Cambridge returned to plan the site using just hand tapes and snorkels. They revealed the plan and layout of a Greek Bronze Age town measuring some 300 square metres. The town itself consisting of 15 building complexes, streets, courtyards, graves, rock-cut tombs and what appear to be ritual buildings. What we've got here is something which is two or even 3,000 years older than most of the submerged cities which have been studied, and it's uniquely complete. We have almost the complete town plan, the main streets and all the domestic buildings, and it's also close to the water's edge so that we can study how it was used as a port, where ships came in, and how trade was managed and so on. It is a rare find and it is significant because as a submerged site it was never reoccupied and therefore represents a frozen moment of the past. The remains are just off the shore here, about 50 metres offshore, um, cover about 300 square metres, 300 to 400 square metres, um, consisting of streets, buildings, graves, what we believe to be ritual structures. We want to check um, the accuracy of the, the hand tape survey that was done previously um, and also try and add in some 3D data um, by taking uh, measurements along the bases of walls and also tops of walls so we can tell how high, they, how high they, they are now and if it's done again in the future you know we can work out whether there's erosion going on, if we're losing areas, if we're gaining areas. Uh, we're noticing uh, day by day there's a movement of the sand, we're finding new buildings, we're losing new walls. Up at half past five this morning and we're stopping now because well basically the sun's going down, it's about half past eight. Um, we found a whole range of new buildings. I mean, we must have about 12 new buildings down there. New cis graves, untouched graves, could have infant burials on them. I mean, for the first day, it's pretty amazing. We're currently in one of the streets at Pavlo Petri, and this wall marking one side of the street. And just behind it, there's a series of stone buildings, each one tacked onto the next. So let's take a look. Okay, we're entering a square room uh, with walls of uncut and unmortared stones and the floor itself is a compact layer of rubble and everywhere you look there's uh, pottery. Over here we seem to have yeah, a bit of early Bronze Age storage vessel, probably for wine or, or olives. And here, this stone here is the threshold stone marking the entrance to the site and just here we have another part of a of a Bronze Age drinking vessel, a finer part. So we're looking at domestic items in what is probably a domestic space. So this is a cyst grave uh, made of upright limestone slabs with one sitting on the top and probably a, a burial would be placed in here, probably a, a child given the size. It's located actually within a wall of a settlement, which was quite common in the Bronze Age to bring fertility to the household. We're at the end of the first two weeks of the project and um, it's been actually quite remarkable the amount of material we've managed to come up with. Um, we found 
at least 150 square metres of, of new material, of new buildings, new rooms, um, mainly because there's been a lot of movement uh, in the sand uh, since the last survey here 40 years ago. Um, we've also lifted a, quite a, a bit of material from these new areas, um, ceramics, and what's been surprising is about 80% of them appear to be early Bronze Age, and that actually makes this settlement all the more important. Um, it was a harbour settlement, it, seemed, it was facing the uh, 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 Crete, Minoan Crete, we seem to have Minoan material here as well, so we're at a kind of transition between the Minoan and Mycenaean periods, which is exciting from an archaeological point of view. Um, we've also found uh, the remains of a very large building, about 30 metres by about 15 metres across, which may be um, an early version of a, of a large Megaron structure. What's this piece? This is an animal figurine, mm -hmm. part of an animal figurine that was used for uh, ceremonial purposes. Um, then, equally, mm -hmm. this one is a calculix. It's uh, a champagne glass used for pouring libations for ritual. And these are both Mycenaean and These are both Mycenaean and uh, yeah. yeah. And this one is really, it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an import, an actual import from uh, either Crete or Kithira, mm -hmm. the nearby island. And uh, this is um, uh, Middle Minoan or the transitional... 2000 BC. Yeah, 2000 BC. Yeah. And one of the most interesting pieces that date the, uh, the site uh, to around 2800 BC is this fragmentary um, uh, portable hearth. It's a leg for a, it's a half, leg. basically. Yeah. You would have had four and a half on yes, top of it. Yes, and we have a nice decoration as well. The herringbone decoration, yes, which mm -hmm. we're getting on about 80% of our pottery that's come up is going to be early Bronze the Age. The early Bronze today. Age pottery is around 80% so of the material we've lifted. The really surprising thing from our find so far is that the site actually is even older than we thought it was. It's oh yes, it is. It's around 2800 BC, it's almost mm -hmm. 5000 years old. Yes, it is. So we came here to, to look essentially for um, what we thought was one of the oldest submerged towns in the world of Mycenaean date, which would be about 1600 BC. But what's been a real surprise um, the really pleasant surprise is about 80% of the pottery that we've lifted so far is early Bronze Age. It's about beginning around 2800 BC. So we've got a site essentially around 5,000 years old.